Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Sup FM. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. This is your favorite seeker podcast. I got your boys, Chris Cheney, with me, Yurt, and Lawrence Deloach. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, everybody? How's uh, how's everybody's week been? Pretty good, man. I mean, I got my second shot next week. Uh, a little scared because all of them are seemingly not going well. But mm-hmm. I'm gonna get the second shot next week, and uh, hopefully, I'll be all right. What's up with you guys? Uh, my girlfriend got the Johnson and Johnson uh, vaccine because she only wanted one shot. So now we're on fucking alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got my second shot last week and uh, the next day was pretty rough. But, you know, we're, we're surviving and that's all you can ask for. And that's right. yes, that's it, guys. This is fucking streetwear. Yo, if we want to be outside streetwear making buy, sell trades on the street, face to face, hand to hand combat. Fucking get your vaccine. Get get your shots. Let's do it. Sponsor. I hardly know her. That's correct. So listen, <laughs> Luke, where can they find you at, my guy? They can find me at Trevizus at T R O V E E Z U S on all social media. Uh, I have a new clip on my YouTube called Luke Trevisi Does a Cocaine Joke. You should listen to. It's very fun. Uh Chris, where can they find you? Not that Cheney, C H E N E Y, on all platforms. And A Life Spring started dropping. So the teas are up. I did them all. So buy them, please. <laughs> what about you, L? Where can they find you? You can find me at uh, LCD325. And, 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 and we're not skipping, but I just wanted to say, and a bunch of times. If you, uh, if you hate your job, which many of us do, uh, you can uh, listen to my new podcast. I hate this job. Hell yeah. Great you podcast. Go. Had some really good guests recently. Just want to stress that if you check the list of guests on there, there's some really good high ones. level, high, high level, level guests. guests. We got <laughs> mother effing Luke Trovisi on there. You guys need to listen to that episode. It's one of the one of the best uh, episodes that came out. People love it. The streets love it. So listen to it, you know? Yeah. And you can find the podcast at Sub Podcast NYC on all social media platforms. Uh, uh, you could send us an email via Sub Podcast NYC at Gmail. Uh, we have a phone number, which is also in the link of our Instagram. Uh, and we also have a Discord. That's going to be in the description of this podcast, wherever you find it. Join. Join us. We're having a good time in there. Uh, what did we do this week? We had some fun stuff happen doesn't matter we've had some fun i mean week. just alone the raffle links like the, the the community support you get from one another just kicking it in there it's like i can't stress enough how much the discord it like it's so much fun in there so just make sure you hop in um everyone's got bad takes too so you can just rip each other apart it's true we <laughs> all have bad takes in there we all do so guys where are we starting this week man we got a lot of information a lot of news a lot of debates luke where do you want to start brother i want to start because Chris had something that he came in with. He came in hot today. He was ready to talk about this off the rip. So I want to just get right into Balenciaga Gucci news. High fashion. This is uh, arguably the uh, most high-end premier co-branded collaborative project in the history of fashion. Boom. Balenciaga Gucci. Um, and I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, I can't look. So this is what I was telling uh, Luke off Mike L. Like, I'm not dumb. I'll die on this hill that I'm not a dumb person. You know what I mean? I know I'm not the smartest, but I'm not dumb. And I work in this in this space. I I'm really befuddled by all this shit. Like this shit is like I understand. I could see it to it. It's, it's like a next level project. But I, like. I'm looking at this stuff going like, I have no idea what's happening. Well, let's talk. Why are you befuddled, Chris? I'm confused. Why are you befuddled? If you look at the models, bro, like what is happening? I like it's it's so like diverse that it's it's confusing to a point where I'm like, all the women are wearing the men's stuff and all the men are wearing the women's stuff. Mm -hmm. They're all wearing like riding gear, but there's like no connection. to Like, where's the horse connection? Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, all the pieces are crazy, I, but I don't know who's supposed to wear what. I can't even tell what some of the pieces are. They're so wild. You got to you got to look with your mind's eye, bro. When I see this, this floral suit right here. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? Tonight show with Jimmy Fallon. I'm wearing that shit. Uh, <laughs> really? 
which actually we should talk about that too. Uh, Cuddy with the Cobain uh, reference, but go, go, staying back to this real quick. I'm like, so there's, there's, I think it's Balenciaga that I don't understand because uh-huh. I know what Gucci is and what Gucci does. And it, there, you know, there are top three brands all time, right? Yeah, they make good, they make good loafers. They got a uh, red and green. Everything you need to know about Gucci. I, I just, I, I just don't think I understand Balenciaga as a brand at all. And like they definitely like went into the Gucci space and like fucked them up, not in a bad way. I'm saying that like they just went and like did the Balenciaga thing with Gucci shit, and I'm so confused. Yeah, they were almost like, yeah, 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 yeah. We hear that you have some like directions you want to take this, but what if we didn't do any of that and we just did what we wanted to? I mean, L, just look at these two models in general. I know that for the audio listeners, I'm sorry, this is going to be very uh, visually uh, referenced, but I mean, just like what do, what do we got going on here? Uh, we got weird, weird shit that like is not for us to truly uh, want to wear. Mm-hmm. But I think this is where, unfortunately, and I'm not saying unfortunately, but this is where fashion is, bro. Like dudes are wearing shit that, you know, women will wear and, and you know, women are wearing shit that dudes will wear. Now, would I buy any of this garbage? No, I wouldn't because I feel like um, it's it's garbage. But yeah, I, I'm not understanding it at all, but I, I understand some of it. But this is this is this is. The peak. This is all right. So this is where I'm. I'm trying to take us. High fashion has been pulling from street for the past what, like thirty years per se. Mm-hmm. Like heavily referenced, strongly for the past like ten at least. Right. Okay. You can really see the connection for the past five, but lately, um, like our lifetimes, high end fashion has been pulling from street culture. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at this where I think Balenciaga is sort of like the the peak of street high-end fashion. Does that make sense? Like, I think they're the most sort of like pulling from us. And I'm looking at this. I'm just going like, where, where, what, (laughs) what is happening? It's, it's, it's pretty, it's a lot of colors. They're doing some stuff. It's like, you know, gender fluid stuff that they've been doing in fashion for a minute now. Mm Mm-hmm. The gender uh, fluid thing is that's not important to me. I what, what's confusing to me and it's and it's there's no issue with a guy wearing girls' clothes and a girl wearing guys' clothes. It's like I can't tell where I'm supposed to be wearing any of it. Oh, you're not. But you're that's not, like, Chris. Yeah. Christian, are you gonna? Or would you wear that regardless? That's what I'm trying to figure out. For I, me. I say like, where am I supposed to? I but I mean everybody. Where like, where is anybody supposed to do anything in that stuff? But that's I mean, supposed to be the peak of this space. When you reach the peak of having money, and you have nothing else to spend it on. You wear these crazy outfits to let people know, hey, I have money everywhere you go. That's why you get shit like this. I will say, though, the the branding is very good on all of that. Now, what the fuck does that even mean? Pull up. Can you pull up the um the disco uh shirt we were just looking at? They have like this weird, like all shimmery diamond, like disco ball looking piece. Oh, yeah. Hold on. That shit, all the quality on this shit, because all like the close ups I've seen, all this shit is next level, bro. Like the materials are fucking primo. All this shit is like the highest end shit ever. I just don't understand. Look, I'm not dumb. I just don't understand what this shit is. Mm-hmm. Well, the execution on this shit is crazy. Well, once again, I think, Chris, I think, and I'll say this where you, what you know and what you've worked with in the past is streetwear. Like, yep. you know, and, and it's, and it's, and, and it's in that certain level. It's a mid streetwear, you know, mid to low streetwear. Mm-hmm. When you start getting into this high end stuff, you know, a lot of the pieces we look at are they are basically what I like to call runway pieces, pieces that we will see on the runway. They're sure. Made. No, I, I totally understand that. So a lot of like what the, the the hardcore stuff that will make into the stores or make it on people's backs will probably not be half of the things that we see that we're seeing in, on the pictures. Um, I, I haven't I haven't seen the whole collection. But what I will say is, I mean, when you and we've discussed this and you've brought it up plenty of times when you do, you know, co-branding, you know, collabs, you know, it's it, it it's going to take from they're going to pull from each other. They're going to, yeah, you know, course. like Balenciaga with with this, you know, we're looking at a, a, what a jacket, suit jacket with a skirt, you know, and, and Gucci pants, like a lot of the the writing, you know, that we would see maybe on Balenciaga. And we also see it on Gucci as well. They said, fuck it, let's just throw both, you know, names on on the, the print. But once again, a lot of this is not for the average. Con- this is none of this is for the average consumer, to be honest with you. Well, you know what? Here, this is kind of another thing I, I was talking about with Loop. It is. Nope. Have you seen like Balenciaga's T-shirts? Yes. 
<laughs> they're for regular people. They're just priced at seven hundred. Like, there's no difference between shirts that you and I can buy for thirty bucks and these shirts you buy for seven hundred, except the price tag. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, Luke, pull up that that cat one. Fuck yeah. Been waiting on this one for a minute. Look at this shirt, dude. This is a Balenciaga shirt. Okay. It's got four high quality cats on it. <laughs> the 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 positioning of the of the pictures is not even. <laughs> no, they're not even. <laughs> and the back says meow. <laughs> Lawrence, uh, that this is like you, you're probably like, oh, I'm sold. This, I want a pair of this shirt right now. Well, you can't have it because it's five hundred and fifty dollars. So, yeah, I mean, come on. I'm uh, on a T-shirt. What's well, let's let's kind of talk to uh, the listeners and, and kind of get their opinion. What's the most you guys have spent on a T-shirt? Oh, yeah, actually, that's a great talk because there is sort of like even Supreme resale, right? Like vintage Supreme. There has to be a limit on what you will spend on a shirt because it's a shirt. Mm -hmm. how, how much have you guys spent? I think I've spent uh, 50 on a T, to be honest. 95. I was going to say I've spent maybe like, you know, 120, 130 dollars on a T-shirt, and that's very rare. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I try to keep most of my T-shirts in the forty dollar range, and that's yeah. usually, and that's usually on a sale. So you know, the, the T-shirt will be ninety five dollars. We'll get it marked down to forty, and then I'll be like, you know what, fuck it. But I spent, uh, I bought some rude T-shirts, uh, and I spent like you know, marked down, you know, coupons, you know, gift cards, one hundred thirty dollars. Yeah. So, Luckily enough, I'm I'm within the space where like I usually I get handed stuff, so mm -hmm. I think that's why my shit is low. But I've looked at good price tags and been like, damn, I I would, but I'm not going to. Now I've sold them. I've sold a Morrissey T-shirt uh, on on StockX. And I think I saw, and it was I think it was a black Morrissey. I think I sold it for like five hundred, five fifty, if I'm correct. Ooh, wow, so good. so people are willing to spend for obviously for T-shirts. It all depends on how vintage the T-shirt is, you know, like, you know, what, what, you know, what collab is it or what it is. But I couldn't see myself spending more than a hundred you know, dollars on a T-shirt, man. I mean, you know what? This does carry over. So sort of like just the idea of um, keeping hype high. This this collaboration, though, just to kind of go back to that, like, you know, th these are two brands that no one ever thought would get together. Mm -hmm. um, it's and it's it's the hype train is only there because they're both together. Right. Right. That's what makes it sort of noteworthy. You don't usually just talk about like, you usually it's not post worthy just to talk about Gucci's like latest shit or whatever, maybe like on GQ, but like not in our space, yeah. but this is two of the highest end brands, two of the, the juggernauts in this space coming together. And now sort of like uh, how like the Louis Vuitton Supreme collab sort of like created distance between um, Supreme and other brands. This even takes these brands to another level, too. So that it's like the whole space just keeps widening. The more these brands collab. Yeah. Like the Travis Scott shit where we were talking about. He needs a third party to keep it hype. Like, how high can this shit go? This is kind of getting out of hand. Yeah, it's never going to stop going up, bro. Just keep going up. They're going to figure yeah. something else out. And, you know, corduroy on a sneaker. Ooh, you know, what I mean, they just figure something else out. Well, yeah, I mean, you, when you bring two, you know, fashion houses, you know, like this, you know, two high end, um, the, it, it is going to generate, you know, it's going to, you know, it's like, um, I'm trying to think, you know, when you start thinking Gucci's, they do a lot of uh, collabs with different brands. If I'm yeah, correct. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't anything, you know, different. I mean, that's why I think the Louis Vuitton Supreme joint was such a different because Louis is kind of, they don't really collab much with people if i'm correct they don't it's 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 a different the feel is different the feels off it's like not the same as a regular co-branded project the supreme louis one this one and then um i can't think of a third one but it's th this is top three ch mm -hmm. shit like co-brands mm -hmm. dior jordan yeah dior. no that's it dior jordan. dior jordan that is that's it i mean and those are two so you have like true street which, uh, you know, very arguable with Supreme and true high end. Then you have like uh, performance athletic with high end. And now you have two high end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now we need two high end, one low end, all the collab, triple label. And that's where we're 
start that's where we start the whole cycle over you know what i mean that's, that's the baseline <laughs> you go balenciaga um gucci vans right <laughs> put those three together now we can move into you know vans prada space <laughs> vans and prada would be a hilarious <laughs> collab I, yeah <laughs> well guys uh when is this release did it, did it release yet or it has released or when is it released Ooh, bro, this is so out of my tax bracket. I did not check for a release date. I think I think it's like out now or about to be. It's for the hundredth anniversary of Gucci. Okay, so for the listeners out there, if you want a Gucci and Balenciaga five hundred and fifty dollars t shirt, fucking do it. All right, do treat it, yourself. You got your stemmies. Let's get to it, y'all. What else are we talking about this week, y'all? Uh, d- well, you know, we mentioned earlier, uh, which we didn't really have a, much time to talk about, but that kid Cuddy, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, the tri- the tribute Kurt paying Cobain. homage um to Kurt Cobain on SNL. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, there's not really much to talk about there. Like, you know, thoughts at all. I mean, I'm pretty much just fine with it. I, I think people were just kind of blowing it out of proportions. Uh, wait, what are they saying? What are they saying? Who's blowing uh, it out of proportion? Just people, people just aren't like a hundred percent on board with him wearing a dress on stage. My only thing about that was I wish they didn't make it like a rollout to sell off white. Hmm. You know, like cut like they're the they're, I'm, they're, they're friends. The intent. Well, no, hold on. The, the intent is good. Right. To it like because mental health is a very big thing in America right now. Like we're finally paying attention to how people are mentally. Um, you know, all the, the past couple of years, we've lost a couple of people due to mental health issues. So I like the homage to like mm-hmm. the, the trueness of the reenactment. Like that that's a storytelling thing that we talk about all the time. Like mm-hmm. that pulling that reference, making it real, making it also having a black guy do it. I think too stands a lot because usually black men have a problem wearing dresses and Hollywood tries to make them wear a dress where this time it's sort of like it's a it's a better story being told. Um, I, I think it's just the problem is that they were trying to sell the, <laughs> the dress after and they made a huge thing to look like point out that it was an off white dress. Hmm. Hold on for one second. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to look that up. Off-white Kid Cudi dress. Other than that, I'm cool with it. You know, like, like I think the intent was good. I, like, you know, we always go back to intent. Like, what was the intent of this? Um, I think it was mostly to call out uh, mental health awareness, which I think awareness, um, we're bad at, we're bad at, uh, as a country, uh, making awareness uh seem uh, like good intended sorry i'm like stumbling on my words but um we're just not good at like making awareness the the there's always backlash just because we don't know how to show awareness properly I remember think. everybody at the beginning of this episode chris said he is not a dumb man just remember <laughs> that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah it's, no i listen i i am i understand exactly what you're saying with the uh the kid cuddy stuff in terms of you know they the stigma behind black men wearing dresses uh we also know who kid cuddy is and when i say who who he is as a person he uh this is in the realm of kid cuddy and when you pair him with virgil abloh who you know obviously they're boys you know this is what you get now i think also and i will say this because it was a kurt cobain tribute Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it, it fits well. It was done well. Would I buy that once again? No. no. <laughs> but I love Kid Cudi, the musician, the person. You know, I was more intrigued with his other alpha, his, his other tribute to Kurt Cobain. He wore a green cardigan and he wore the cactus plant uh, flea market uh, dunks, which in, in my opinion, I can't believe, you know, how much money these things are actually going for right now. I know. Oh, where are they, they at now? Oh my god! I, I saw a post from round two, where they were selling the uh, the gray ones, and they were brand new, uh, four thousand two hundred fifty dollars, I believe. Well, uh, yeah. No, thank you. So, I mean, I I I like that outfit a lot better. But once again, it's Kid Cudi. I get it. I know who he is. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, I think it, it's just the selling the dress after i think that's the real issue but i mean i'm not even really mad at that it is what it is we just don't know how to bring awareness uh to the forefront correctly there always has to be like some side shit well artists do shit like that all the time like they yeah, drop something and then they'd be like all right you could purchase this now you could purchase my song now on you know this and that he just dropped the fucking dress yeah yeah 
Just yeah, dropped the know. dress, baby. He just dropped the fucking dress on, you know. So, but you know, I always, you know, with Virgil, there's always, you know, some some weird shit. You know, Virgil's had so much heat in the past like couple of years for doing things that you know people are like, all right, Virgil, what are you doing? So this is just it just kind of adds to it. He's gonna yep. make a dress with holes in it. Mm-hmm. He makes jeans with holes in them. Yeah, but we we everybody has jeans with holes in them. No, yeah. like perfect circles, dog. Like not rips. Yeah, man. You never take a cookie cutter to your fucking shoes, <laughs> uh, to your jeans. What's wrong with you, man? Now you're right. My fault. My what fault. Are you? I thought you were a designer, bro. Damn, I'm fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about today, uh, like this week's re- releases, right? The big release this week, uh, the Hyper Royal Jordan 1s, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, anybody cop? Negativo. Nah, I didn't. No? Okay. Me neither. I did not cop either. Um, anybody have any difficulty now that they well, actually, you guys both d- d- uh deleted the sneakers app, correct? Done, mm-hmm. Dunzo Lawrence, Dunzo. yeah. Did you get back in? Uh, I thought about it, but you know, <laughs> right now I'm, I'm, I'm out for a little while, so yeah, I might get back in soon, but you know, you know what this reminds me of is uh, when I first downloaded Tinder. And like yeah. I wasn't like all the way with online dating yet. So I download it and like swipe a little bit. Like, oh, this is fun. And then I delete mm-hmm. going like, what am I doing? And then they're kind of going like, damn, there was some nice stuff on there. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then you came back and you digitally imposed yourself into a bunch of iconic scenes and whatnot. Didn't you have oh, like, a picture? Yeah, right. that that was the move. I mean, just quick side note. The, the real way to use Tinder is you Photoshop all your pictures but mm-hmm. not in a way where you look better. You photo. I photoshopped myself into like movie scenes and I was crushing. Yeah. Crushing. Yep. Hilarious. He was doing very well for himself. It was pretty Which, good. Once again, if you remember at the beginning of the episode, he said he is not a dumb man. I am not a dumb man. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so Luke, did you did you take a shot here and miss or what of happened? Of course. I, I listen. I talked to everybody I know, tried to make a blood oath for for a pair of these. It was no good. You hit up uh, Mischief and Little Nas X and were like, yeah, I'll sell my soul. My, yeah, exactly. They were like, we could make you a custom, but there's going to be <laughs> blood in them. And I'm like, no, why? <laughs> but yeah, I tried, tried really hard. Uh, I did not get them. Uh, might sell some other shit to get them. Think really? about it still. Now, what's so, can I ask you guys, what's so special about these? Because then they have like turbo greens and they have right. all these other ones that are very similar to these or. But that's why. Uh, I used to have the ice cream blazers. That's the only reason I want these is because my ice cream blazers fell apart. Uh, I beat them to death and they're the same colors as like that turbo green. There's the there's like a blue pair that's like a a chocolate chip or something. And Mm -hmm. that's supposed to be like kind of similar to that colorway. And I just need them to do like a pink suede one, too. And then I'll have my ice cream pack again. So Um, that's, that's my own personal goal. You know what, Lawrence? I, I this is gonna sound dumb, and I did say I'm not a dumb man at the beginning of this podcast, but I think it's also the word royal. I think that word is just so synonymous with so many good sneakers that people mm-hmm. see royal in another sneaker name, and they're like, "Yo, I want that." You okay. want it, right? That's fair. That's like, fair. That's fair. regardless of anything, if it says Chicago, we want it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it has toe in it, we want it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I think honestly, that's part of it. And there was also some weird rumors that like this got canceled or some shit. Like, I don't know. There was some weird shit going on with the shoe. Wow. Well, I will say um, I, I, my friends, same thing. They're like, oh, I need these. I fucking want these. I want these so bad. And it's like, yo, these shits are to me, they're OK. Mm-hmm. Um, I already know the hype on these. And I can see that, you know, in a, you know, in a few months, in a few years, the ticket on these are going to be insane. Like, I feel it. Like, I don't even I didn't even check aftermarket prices, but I'm sure it's at 300 plus right now. I think it's at like five. Uh, 500 for the hyper royals i think so luke can you pull up stock i don't want to (laughs) (laughs) wow and my size a size 12 480 dollars the lowest ass yeah that's uh, that sounds about right wow what makes i don't see what what's so hot about these to make them i mean obviously that price comes down a little bit but what is so special about these i mean these are kind of bro there's hype in the name hyper and then royal (laughs) these are jordan one I would argue these are the poor man's trophy rooms <laughs> hmm. uh, in the sense that they look, it's like, oh, he got iced out. Look, I have my iced out shoe. I have my iced out Jordan one. Wow. 
<laughs> I, I mean, maybe. Who knows, dude? I don't know. I mean, I mean people, people were calling the the turbo racers from last year the, the fake Dior's, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've sort of established that part of the business model of these, at least Nike, is to, like, give you something you can't get and then mm-hmm. have six shoes that sort of look like it. Right. Yeah, I mean... I don't really get it either. I would have liked this to stay around the 300s, but you know, it's just that people like blue right now, you know, blues in. I don't, I don't understand it, man. I, I really don't. My, like I said, my friend and I, we had a nice little debate about these and he's, you know, Oh man, I'm fucking mad and man. And I'm like, they're okay. Mm-hmm. They're okay. Like, you know, but I don't see the, you know, and I, and I think maybe that's because and I'll be and I've said this before and I'll say it again on the podcast. If it wasn't like an original color, I really find a tough time to to get excited about like these these last like the year, last two years of Jordan one releases. I have a very like I said, I can say the Nutri Grays love those, you know, yeah. it's a, but mm-hmm. like Hyper Royals, Turbo Greens, you know. You know, the, the green joints that all, you know, all the, the black and green joints, the, the perp, court purples. Mochas? Mochas? I like mochas, but I think a lot of the mocha love came from people missing out on Travis Scott's. Fair. I think that's what if, if, if it re- if there was no Travis Scott's releasing and then mochas came out, I think they would be a nice shoe because it's very clean. It's a brown shoe, bl- brown, black, white. Love it. But it wouldn't I don't think it would garner the love that is getting. But. The hyper royals, fuck man. I didn't five hundred. That's wow. Yeah, man. Hope is there can... anything else coming out of the the Jordan One silhouette this year that we're looking forward to? Well, the Travis Frag, you know that. Right. Yeah, um, there's there's the B pollen ones that are coming out the black and yellow. Mm-hmm. Black and yellow, black and yellow. Oh, they have that Lakers one coming out too. Oh yeah, the Lakers one. We should talk about that just because that is that's a weird shoe to me. Explain. Uh, they they got that hit on the the heel that it's Nike in the Lakers font. Like that's that's dope. Like I'm not saying it's a bad shoe. Like I I like that, especially for like if you're a, if an LA fan. Like L, that's you all day. If you ask me, I don't know if mm-hmm. like maybe wearing them. I don't know, but at least owning them because you're a fan. But like, why didn't they do that with all the teams? Well, I guess is it a Kobe reference? I have no clue. I can't even find these shoes right yeah, now. Yeah, I can't like, even find them. I don't know what you. Yeah. They're, they're on there though. I remember seeing them on the sneakers app. Yeah, they have the they have the Nike in the Lakers like font where it's like uh, it's got like the speed lines. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was cool. I wish they just did that for every team. But I get it if it's like a Kobe layup. You know what I mean? Oh wait, no, no, no. It's not. It's, I mistake my mistake. This is my uh, this is this is a dunk, not a Jordan one. Oh, okay. Uh, I was gonna say because I, I didn't I didn't hear anything about. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's a dunk. Yeah. It's a dunk. I mean, uh, either way, though, still a dope shoe. I just wish they did it for all the teams because I would love a Celtics version. Yeah, well, you you know, maybe the Celtics don't need to have everything that everybody else has. All right. Maybe, maybe you maybe you got enough rings. Maybe that's enough. How maybe about that? Nike's biggest athlete plays on the Lakers. How about that? So how about that? How about that? Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying I like Celtic stuff. All right. Listen, <laughs> I like blue and orange on, on my shoes. But you don't see me complaining every week when they don't make a fucking Knicks colorway. <laughs> Let me I stand corrected. Nike's biggest active athlete is mm-hmm. plays on the Lakers. I don't want people to be like, well, fuck Michael Jordan. But no, <laughs> but their current their biggest active athlete is a Laker. And so that's why, you know, some, we're going to get a Laker Air Max 95 colors. We're going to get mm-hmm. Laker dunks because LeBron James is a Los Angeles Laker. Now. True. Lawrence, are you? I'm gonna try to get you on record right now. Are you going for these 95s? Because I will put in for you. I will put in an extra mm. raffle for you. On, honestly, and I'll say this: I think there's not too many sneakers this year that have, have moved me, and I and, and Air Max 95s will be the same. I'm getting to the point now where it's like, I I I like oh I gotta have these. I need these, and then I will wear them once or twice, and then be like, ah. Eh. You know, and I think that's where I'm I'm trying to be better at. So I've told myself that, you know, this year I am only I'm going to pay resale for the neutral grace. Mm-hmm. I've, I've already set my limit. I put a bid in when it gets accepted, it gets accepted. And, um, you know, and other than that, 
I am not really going too crazy for sneakers right now. Yeah. But you don't want the uh the Supreme 96s? Um, I like the camouflage colorway, but I'm not like, I mean, once again, I you see, all right. So I have Supreme 98 in the snakeskin joints, and I was like, oh my God, I need these. I love these. And now I wear them and I'm like, uh, these are regular. These aren't anything. And same thing with like the gold subtempos. Like I like Supreme joints, it has to, you know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not a fan. I mean, I like them. The camo ones are beautiful. Mm -hmm. I just hate the clear. I wish they weren't clear. I they could have been yeah. anything other than clear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of clear stuff. I think uh, I think they figured out how to use plastic more on their sneakers. Well, you know oh, what? Yeah. The other thing is, dude, like, you know how like you, like when we remember a shoe and then we go, like, oh, wow. And then we think about all the other shoes like this happens in companies. So mm -hmm. like they probably remembered like the cope. Uh, or was it Cope, whoever it was, or like the invisible ones that were probably in a meeting like, oh, yeah, dude, those are tight. And then they just like ideated a bunch of clear sneakers. And then like, you know, this is what happens. I have a funny story about the invisible woman since we're since you brought those up, man. Me and my friend, one of my best friends in the world, Yannick, we we uh, we waited online for around 12 hours to get a pair of invisible women. And we both got them. This is 2006. And I remember the hype around New York City was through the fucking roof for those sneakers and i will tell you i never wore them and then they started cracking on me damn like, so so what i've learned guys is and, and i think it, what it was is a sneaker like that is hot for the moment and then you know 2006 is like oh invisible woman like what clear it what what and this is coming off like espos and shit like that you Espo, know that's what it was not cope oh well yeah espos were you know a few years earlier mm-hmm and I remember and 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 like, you know, obviously, like you said, like the clear has been done, you know, clots and things like that. But that's what I'm telling you guys, like you, it, we're conditioned to like, like, I need these and you don't fucking need them. Yeah. Wow. You don't, you don't fucking need them. No, I'm serious, dude. Like, like I, I am really sitting here thinking back to like sneakers that I was going insane for, like doing, like figuring out ways I need. I got to have got to have. Need to fucking have these sneakers, man. And then you wear them a few times and you're like, all right, the thrill's gone. Oh, now it's on to the next. And it's like, bro. Yeah. There's only so many sneakers, only so many, you know, only so many shoes you could wear, you know? And actually, and I think this could segue great into uh, the Nike thing that you want to talk about, Luke. How right. you, you yeah. can buy one thing and then just give it back. <laughs> we can wear it once and flex and then hand it back to them. Right. Which is also, you know, kind of kind of my strategy as well. Not so much as like, a, you know, returning the sneakers, but like, you know, at the end of the year, I'll kind of do like a check on like what I've worn in the past year and what what I what I have that I don't really wear like that. And then I sell it out. And that's when I get all the crazy shit in the beginning of the year. So that's kind of my game plan. But yes, Nike is uh, it just entered a, another initiative uh, as part of their, um, you know, uh, move to zero program to kind of uh, help with the environmental issues in the world. Uh, they want to, uh, what do you call it? Hold on, sorry, something's going on over here on my computer. Uh, they want to uh, start selling sneakers that are kind of pre-owned uh, in their Nike stores. And the whole idea is, you know, they have like a 90 day wear test program. If you return your sneakers there, they have to like go through some of them. Most of them just get burned. I believe they get the really get rid of some of them. They bring them to outlets. They rather just have them in store now in like mm -hmm. a discounted section. I like the move, honestly. Um, I'm a little weary just because I don't like the idea of Nike getting to resell the, st the stuff themselves. Like, I don't know enough about this to really speak on it. Like I, I read the headline, but I didn't like go into it. So I don't know what the pricing gauge is going to be like, but like, like we already have enough insiders doing resale shit. You know what I mean? Like Foot Locker's already in the game. Um, I, I like, I, are they going to be able to resell for higher if it ends up being like a hype no. shoe? Like, no, I don't think so. no. it's okay. all discounted. So that's the thing where okay. it's like when everybody says, Oh, they're reselling their own shoes now. It's like, well, no, because if they're returns, they have to give those people back money. Right. They have to give them back their money. So if I paid one hundred fifteen dollars for dunks, I, I wore them for 90 days, scuff them up a bunch and then I return them to Nike. I get my whole one fifteen because of the 90 day wear policy. Uh, then they're just stuck with a shitty pair of shoes. Right. 
but now they can discount the set and sell it for like eighty five dollars, eighty dollars to some kid who wants a pair of dunks. And that's what I was going to say. So when you start looking at, you know, Nike is this is very smart, obviously, on their end, because, you know, when you look at the hype sneakers, they never get returned anyway. How many hype sneakers, you know, get returned? It's always the, you know, and the bricks that get returned. But most of the time when you return a brick, you know, if you're trying to resell it, you, no one's worn it. So Nike's still going to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. So what happens, I think, with a lot of the stuff that they're going to be receiving will probably be a lot of like actual athletic stuff stuff that like i wore one time to play basketball and i'm like i don't like the way these feel yeah let me see and now take them back to nike and then like luke said you know if you if i bought a pair of Kyrie Irving sneakers to play ball and i've done this and i i worn them one time and i'm like i don't like the way they feel on my feet back to nike once like luke said you lose the 130 dollars because now you've done a return and then you know back in the days you burn it you know whatever mm -hmm. If you were able to, like you said, discount those sneakers to eighty dollars or whatever it is, Nike still probably paid three, four dollars for those sneakers to be made. Mm -hmm. So they're still coming out on top, and they're not. Like I said, there's like that's what's gonna get returned stuff that people have worn to play ball and to play tennis and the you know shit like that. Mm -hmm. It's a genius move, man. Uh, I've had. I think Ju Juice has told me a couple stories about like when he was working at Nike, how every now and then there'd be like, you know, occasionally you'd get in a pair of shoes that's like not hype, but not a brick either. You know, mm -hmm. like you'll make like $20 profit. It's not really worth that much work. So mm -hmm. like some people will be able to find some pretty decent shoes there. Uh, one of his coworkers was able to just procure his own pair of fire red fours because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. obviously when people return stuff, the, the staff gets first pick. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, every now and then we might see something hit the shelves, but that's a lot of filters to go through. So, but yeah, I feel like I feel like it's going to be like uh, like a vintage store type of thing. Sometimes you go into a vintage store just to see what they got. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you're just going to go into Nike just to see what they got. What's on the <laughs> what do you got over there? Anything good? Anything uh, like twenty dollar resale profit over there? <laughs> but that's dangerous. That's that's what they're trying to do. The whole idea oh, is to like course. add a second initiative for you to come to the, the brick and mortar because. People don't really like working in brick and mortars anymore. They, they, they've got the online stores doing so well. Mm -hmm. So now if I'm more incentivized to come in, because maybe something I like will be in there. That's another reason that's just kind of works for Nike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I get you. I'm with that. Also, I wanted to shout out Dexter, the creator. He got a he's not, oh. he's doing a network thing this week for 420. Oh, he's nice. Got, Good for him. Yeah, man. He's doing um he's doing his own like see through sneaker for four twenty through. But he's doing see through too? Yeah. Oh no, not this one. This one's not see through. This was like Oh, okay. Oh, that is damn. What is that that whatever the fuck that material is? That shit is sick. Yeah, we're gonna have to call him and ask him what he did there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh yeah, I don't know what that kind of material is. It looks like uh almost like a foil that you use for uh, films and stuff where you'd like put the filters over the lights. Yeah, it's probably like some weird PVC, like whatever, but that's cool. Good for him, man. I mean, ooh, yeah, nice. No, that's cool. And just to think about how these are all handcrafted, like that's this guy is fucking good. This guy's good. This guy's good. This guy pretty knows good. what he's done. Yeah. Pretty, good. pretty good. Dude knows what he's done. I'm over the clear, though. I think we need to stop with the clear stuff. Let's like not, I don't, no transparency in my shoes. Let's make it all, the opacity is 100%, uh, 100%, guys. No, nothing. Yes. You know, that's what I, I was saying, man. It's it's you know it's a fa it's a thing, man. It's it's you know you you see these these clear shoes and, and and it has a shelf life. That's what I'm saying with most sneakers. Like they're they're good for a certain era, and then you're like, ah, that was that that was a good run. Yeah, you know, and then maybe maybe occasionally you may break it out for you know, but like, ain't much, man. That's why I'm looking back and I'm like, all these. You know, these Jordan ones that people are going crazy for, you know, it, it, mm. <laughs> yeah, there, there is one pair of uh, sneakers that I do want to talk about because we did see official uh, images uh, released this week. And it was the uh, Jordan Four lightning, which oh, I think yeah. this is the first actual official release of these, if I'm correct. I don't think these have been retro. If I'm correct, maybe I'm incorrect. Let me I'm see them. Hold on, I'm pulling them up right now. Pull it up, Luke. Pull it up. 
So the Jordan Four Lightning is um, it was part of the remember the original we saw was the Thunder and Lightning pack, uh, and you know and then we they released the Thunders multiple times, and I'm not sure if these have ever gotten an actual release. Hmm. I mean, these are great. Nothing wrong with I. You know, actually, let me call on because I got to hold myself accountable. I yep. always have said yellow shoes are bad. Mm-hmm. Um, the mesh, the tongue, and the uh, the strap. In the mm-hmm. soul, save it. The the contrast of the stuff on the yellow makes them okay. These are not bananas. Not bananas. No, but and they also give me Wu Tang vibes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, so yeah, that's also probably it too. The just just black and yellow on a shoe. I just I think I'm always going to think Wu Tang. So it's always going to be a, a home run. Is this going to be? I don't know if it's like. Is this supposed to be like a leather or is it a suede? It looks like a leather on it because if it's like a suede look it's gonna i think it'll look a little nicer when it starts to get a little bit uh of a wear down on it i don't think it's leather or suede it might be like durabuck or nubuck type material Mm, okay nubuck ages interestingly um yeah i I like them too but i'm I'm always a fan of yellow sneakers just because chris isn't (laughs) i'm a i'm a big yellow uh i try to make the nike by you i try to make a yellow pair nike by you dunks Mm -hmm. um I love the Canary, you know, um, Tiffany dunks. Like, I, I think yellow is such a uh, a wonderful color on a pair of sneakers when done properly. Yeah. That is the key when done properly, because if not, it's like, you know, again, just banana feet. Mm-hmm. There's uh, got to be like uh, some contrast in there. We've got 420 coming up as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked a little bit about 420 dunks last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we all on record saying that 420 the the skunks are the best 420 dunk? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think the skunks are the best. I think so too. So what? Let's let's ask this question then, because we're all gonna say the skunks. Mm-hmm. What's your second favorite 420 dunk? What is the runner up to the skunk? I like the dog walkers. Oh. Yeah, actually, that's what I was gonna say. The dog walkers. Fuck, I was gonna say the dog walkers too. Yeah, I like dog walkers. <laughs> That one has the best narrative attached to it besides like the actual reference. So like, of course, you always start off with like, this is a weed shoe and everyone's like, ooh, and that's the best, you know, the first and best one. Like we've always talked about the OG is the best one, but the dog walker actually had like a cool thing to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with that whole like the whole storytelling of of the, like the fur and then like there's a little shit stain on the on the sole yeah. of the shoe um and you know walk the dog was like supposed to be like the designer's code for like going to smoke a joint. Yeah, all that is a slam dunk, you know. Slam I mean? dunk. Uh I guess another runner up I would say would be the Cheech and Chong's. Yes. Jeez, you know Chong's that is definitely movie. third. We have to like we got to like mention them at least because we would get flamed if we didn't. Um yeah, another great shoe from the 420 camp. Uh, first kind of tearaway in that 420 collection. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm surprised. I'm a little upset that we didn't have more of a debate over <laughs> our favorite 420 ducks. It well, was, no, it's pretty um, cut and dry. Yeah, it's it's, it's really like, I don't know, like who in, name any of the other ones and we'll be able mm-hmm. to say, give you reasons why the other ones are better. Okay. I, I, so, I like hemp's. I like the hemp's. hemp's yeah, hemp's are good too. Hemp's so, are great. Nice Kicks did a or Sneaker Freaker did a uh, like a uh, what do you call it? like a March Madness style bracket uh, off on the 420 dunks. And they said that the reverse skunks were the best one. And I was like, I didn't realize the people who read this magazine have no taste. You know, wait, the reverse. Wait, the, the, the purple skunk. Yeah, they chose the purple skunk over the original. Oh, OK. So, the OK, OK. Um, I think younger people will say the purple just because uh and the strawberry cough uh, or the uh, strawberry coughs beat the walk the, the dog walkers, which is why I'm like, oh, you guys really don't know what the fuck you're talking. Well, about. I here's the thing. I think I mean strawberry. I mean strawberry coughs never even saw a release. Right. So it's kind of like, all right, this is the the prototype of what we saw. Like there, you know, we may have saw some, I don't know, maybe unauthorized pairs out in the wild, but we never actually saw a full release. And I think the same thing goes with the the reverse, uh, skunks. reverse skunks now the reverse skunks obviously there was some type of release at familia uh in, in minnesota but i just feel like um those same thing man it's you know very very rare very i don't know like that you see any out in the wild but for people who actually have 420 dunks yes yeah, the skunks the dog walkers hemp's cheech and chong's um you know the only thing i'll give the purple skunks is that they were numbered that's yeah. the only thing that mm-hmm. to me 
The other one's way more wearable, more true to what the reference is, which is weed. You know what I mean? Mm. There's not actually purple nugs out there. There are, but they're not, you know. You got to find a better mm. dealer, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Luke, you, I mean, you're the repre- you're the stoner representation on this podcast, so you, maybe maybe you got me. All right, maybe there's more purple you. out we'll, there. We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk after <laughs> the show. <laughs> There, there was a white one too. Didn't, didn't they do a white widow or some shit? White widow, yeah. Those were mids mm. though. So those are kind of just <laughs> the out white widows were mids. <laughs> white widows were mids. <laughs> Which Hilarious. is funny because it kind of still keeps with the with the theme. I know like the hemp's are the lows, so it's like, eh. But for the most part, everything's high. And then you got mm. White Widows, which is pretty fucking mid, bro. It's just dude, smoking mids, bro. You got the white <laughs> middle mids, bro. It's hilarious. Uh white widow mids, bro. White widow mids. Do you have anything else we want to talk about today? Uh, or should I go into my... Oh, come on. Don't do the debunk. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that, Chris. <laughs> do you have anything else we want to talk about today? Or should I go into my uh, my Chinatown market replacement names? Go into your Chinatown market yeah. replacement. Do it. All right. Before we get into this, I want to tell everybody that uh, we are on YouTube. Watch our videos on YouTube, right? Sup FM. Yep. Uh, you could always look us up. We're always there. Sup Podcast NYC. Instagram. If you're in the Discord, we alert you when we drop mm-hmm. the stuff. So audio and video. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, me, and two other people with uh, small boy feet of eight and a half uh, are in getting into a death match situation uh, mm-hmm. because of the Discord. Uh, one of the owner, uh, one of the the people in the Discord has a pair of Travis Scott sixes. We'll give them to us for free if we procure him a pair of Mars Yards two point fives, and if not, we'll death match for it. So. You know, my life's on the line and you'd be able to watch this live in the discord. So join the discord. Um, with all that being said, you know, LZD three, two, five. Right. Yes. Uh, uh, I hate this job. Right. This podcast. Very funny. Not that Cheney. Yep. Very funny. Trevisus. Very funny. You know the things, you know, the vibes. Let's get into this fucking list right now, boys. Do it. Let's go. All right. Wait, so Lawrence, first, should we should we rate these on a scale of one to five? Five being the best, one being the worst. Why are you well, gonna rank? Just, that's what I was gonna say. Let's just let him rank let, my work. Yeah, let Luke, do his thing. No work to the table. <laughs> do it, Luke. Do your thing, bro. I'm here okay. for you. Just do it. Knock Boom. it out. First one. We're just gonna bang the first one out. Uh, we're just changing. We just did the, the same formula. We just changed some places around. We did Little Italy store. That's the first one that I did right there. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I've got bootleg bodega. That's another one that I've got. Okay. Um, that one I didn't like as much because I was like, oh, well, that's kind of like a more New York cultural p- appropriation. So how about bootleg bazaar? Bootleg love bazaar. it. There love that one. I love that one. Actually, that one I'm not mad at. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Bootleg bazaar. We've got fake fresh. I don't know why I have that one, but that's just there. OK. Um, RC Cola Corner Store. How do we feel about that one? Because it's like kind of a bootleg soda. Bootleg store the legality Ooh. behind that one can get us in trouble can get you okay. might get you in trouble might get me in trouble that's right luke trevisi only luke trevisi would get in trouble for this there you go generic general like that it's like a general market Gen- i like that generic general market and then finally i have here uh fentanyl fair uh because that's a- another kind of unauthentic <laughs> drug <laughs> fentanyl fair. I, I like that too uh huh. And then the last one that I came up with is just not Chinatown Market. They just put not in front of everything, and they can keep everything. Wait, say that again. The last one is what? The last one is not, not Chinatown Market. Not Chinatown Market. Yeah, funny. They can keep operating, but they have to call themselves not Chinatown Market. Funny. All right. Yeah. I like the Bargain Bazaar one. That shit is uh. Yeah, bizarre. Bargain Bazaar is not bad actually. Bootleg, I pre- bootleg Bazaar or <laughs> bootleg, bootleg Bazaar? That's what bootleg it was. Bootleg Bazaar, yeah. yes. Yeah, because right. Bargain Bazaar is an actual store. So bootleg, <laughs> yeah, I love bootleg Bazaar. That's fucking funny. All right, so Chris, let's make some fucking bootleg Bazaar merch. Yo, it's coming out. <laughs> bootleg <laughs> Bazaar. <laughs> I oh, actually and- like that name a lot. Yeah. And my note for bootleg Bodega was the smiley face would just be would just have cat ears. I can't like do it. that one because there's bo- there's there's already a bodega store and that's brand. True. <laughs> oh, that's true. We could get in legal trouble with more than one entity. You're right. I like that. When are we going to attack bodega for appropriating bodegas? Uh, listen, man, that's your territory. That's like literally your territory. That is <laughs> your home turf. They know where you live. <laughs> there's there's no bodegas in Boston. Okay. That's true. Which is fun. That, that, this is the funniest part about Bodega. There's like no 
true bodegas but in wouldn't, Boston. Wouldn't you argue that that makes it more um, findable in a way? Because you're just looking up the only bodega in Boston? I mean, I guess. But the, the funniest thing is when people go in there and they don't know how to get to the store. That is, is the funniest shit. It's very fun. It's when they're very looking fun. around, just going like, so where are the shoes? And uh-huh. then like the guy at the mm-hmm. ca- I've been there just hanging out so many times with the guy at the counter is like, what are you talking about? Just like fucking with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny, bro. I brought I brought um I brought the Skanks interns to uh to Bodega um just for the trip because uh when Becky was producing your show, I was like, geez, you've never been to Bodega, we gotta go. Because uh-huh. like that's mm-hmm. required information. So I brought them in and you know, I said, like, what's up to the guy at the counter? Like I knew him because that's what you're supposed to do when yep. you're when you're trying uh-huh. to stunt on people. That um, facts. And then so I, I did the one of these and he was like, OK, well, <laughs> you know, he was like, OK. And then I was like, they were like, this is the sneaker store. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like, just give it one second. And they were like, I was like, you just stand in front of that door right there. And then like, you know, they just stood there and I was like, you got to hit a button. You got to hit a button. And they couldn't figure That's it out to five, five. And then somebody opened the door and almost hit a uh, uh, mic in the face. It was great. It was wonderful. Mwah. That's that snapping machine, man. Yeah, you know, we, we've talked about the greatest stores in streetwear have always had like a, the, the I don't want to say gimmick because it deserved more. Res- it deserves but- more respect than calling it a gimmick. But like, you know, we talked about DQM. We mm-hmm. talked about um, Bodega. Na- I mean, all these brands have had like their stores. It mm-hmm. has to have like a good gimmick. Even Supreme's gimmick, which is like being the like kind of Soho sneaker store. I mean, mm-hmm. s- skateboarding Street, store. Street, yeah. Uh, was like kind of its own. It's it's, uh, you know. Not not on the same level as those other two, but the theme of the store kind of just made all sense, I think. Yeah. Oh, is there any other ones that we're missing? Like any big ones that you can think of? There's a lot, man. If we try to go through all of them, you know what I mean? Just mm. think about just like from West Coast to like join. Everybody should join the discord and tell us your favorite um, sneaker kind of store sneaker gimmick store. Yeah. In quotes. All right. Any final thoughts today, boys? Final thoughts. Uh, 420 blaze up. Mm-hmm. Get your white widow mids. No, and that's it, man. I think uh I think that's it for this week. I think so too. Everybody yeah. stay safe out there. Yeah, yeah, I'll be safe, y'all. Mm-hmm. Thanks for Thank listening. You. Yep. And just again, stand ups coming back, uh, sold out Tuesday coming back at some point. We're working it out. Just be ready for it and come see us live whenever we post about it. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. All right, peace, y'all. All right, peace, y'all.